it's Platt, and today I show you how to make tapache. So let's go. So when I started this channel, and if you go back to watch my original video, what I said was the purpose of the channel was to kind of document my wonderful journey through this weird world of alcoholic beverages and just kind of show you what I've learned along my journey, my years of bartending, home brewing, what have you. And what you quickly learn is that you're always building. Um, you know, you start off with home brewing. Well, let's get into wine making. Well, let's get into cider making then. After cider making, you're going to get into mead making. After that, you're going to start discovering all these wonderful fermented beverages that have been produced for hundreds of thousands of years all over the world. Every culture, even subcultures, have their own unique fermented alcoholic beverages. And I use the term fermented because a lot of these drinks are around well before distillation was around. Um, and there's just so many cool drinks out there that have uh, yet to be discovered. And even a nerd like me is finding, you know, new stuff every day. And today is one of those examples. Uh, we are going to make tapache. Now, if you're not familiar with tapache, a uh, little background into it. Tapache uh, dates back to the pre-Columbian era in Mexico. Uh, the local native tribes made, I can't pronounce the, the original drink, but it's a, the, the word's a variation on tapache, and it meant drink from corn. And that makes sense because the Mayans were the first to really cultivate corn, and so a corn-based fermented beverage just makes sense. Now over the years, that recipe is more from a corn-based spirit to now it's a pineapple-based spirit. Uh, tapache today is something you would find in Mexico um, that a local street vendor would sell. And it's a kind of a sweet, refreshing, light beverage. Um, a good comparison is kvass. If you remember a little over a year or so, I made some kvass. That was a classic Eastern European lightly fermented, lightly alcoholic beverage that has kind of morphed into something more like a soft drink. And tapache is similar today. Uh, there's not a ton of commercial production, but there are commercial products out there, uh, variations on tapache that are pretty much non-alcoholic. Again, sold more as a soft drink than a alcoholic beverages. But like Kvass, this is something that's made by a lot of people at home, and we know <laughs> With home brewers, we'll always figure out a way to bump up that ABV a little bit. So, uh, probably at the home setting, it's a little more of an alcoholic beverage than the commercial uh, presentation. But it is a, uh, a classic Mexican beverage, and again, it's one of those unique treats that, that you, you can find throughout the world. Real quick, what do we need to make our tapache? First and foremost, you're going to need one pineapple, just one good size, ripe pineapple. Don't get too crazy with it. Uh, next is ingredients you might have to do a little look searching for. It's called peel and sea loaf. It is an unrefined cane sugar. Um, it is similar to if you've ever seen or used jaggery. Jaggery is an Asian unrefined cane sugar. Um, you should be able to find this in the Mexican food section of your grocery store, but if you can't, you can always substitute brown sugar. Pretty much the same thing, just a, a slight tweak. But that's a. This is the Mexican presentation on that, and we're trying to stay as authentic as possible. So we're going we're to use peel and seal. And then, last but not least, some ground cinnamon. You can use a whole stick if you want to, but we're going to use ground cinnamon. I have seen some other recipes where they've used thrown in clove or nutmeg or whatever, but for the for the most part, in if you went down to Mexico or whatever, you're most likely going to find cinnamon is the spice in tapache. Well, now that we've got everything together, let's make some tapache. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a quart of water, heat it up, and we're going to um, we're going to incorporate our peel and seal. They come in these hard cones, so. Unlike brown sugar, we're going to have to break this down. We're going to break this down in water just so we can get this to blend. It's, like I said, kind of comes in a hard shape, but we're just going to do that. You can bring this to boil. You don't have to, but if you want to bring it to boil for sanitation purposes, uh, feel free. Uh, speaking of sanitation purposes, went ahead and I've got 
my sanitizer. I'm using my two gallon Mr. Beer kit. We're gonna make a one gallon batch of this, but because we're gonna have chunks of the pineapple in there, whatever needle in more room, the little gallon fermenters I have only have a small neck. This has the big top, so use a bucket, a, you know, a bigger sanitizer if you need to, but the little sanitizer, or the little fermenters uh, won't work on this. So anyway, I'm, I went ahead, got that fermenter. Thank you, Bert. I've got that sanitizing while I'm melting the sugar, and you're just gonna, it's gonna take a little bit, because this stuff's pretty hard, but you're just gonna crush this sugar so we can break this all up. Once we get this done, and we get this all broken down and incorporated, we're going to throw our quarter water in here, then we're gonna add cool water up to one gallon, so we'll have our one gallon liquid, and then we'll come back to cut up the pineapple and uh, get everything else set up. All right, so we got our peel and seal fully uh, integrated, and we got it in my fermenter here. Uh, like I so said, we used about a quarter of water just to heat up, incorporate that peel and seal. Next, I added three quarts of cool, cold water just to bring the temperature down. I did do a gravity read because I know people out there want to know what the alcohol percentage of this is. Um, with just the peel and seal, remember we still are going to get some uh, sugars out of this pineapple. Our original gravity came out to 1.028. Uh, if we ferment all the way to 1.00, we'd get an ABV around 3.5, 3.6. Now remember though, this beverage is just, is just fermented for a few days, so we're not going to get a full fermentation. And even though we're going to get additional sugars out of the pineapple, which might would push just closer to 3 or 4%, alcohol by volume. I'm saying we're going to be closer to the 3% range just again because we're going to do a short fermentation. Um, that's kind of in the session beer range again similar to Kvass which was a low alcohol bubbly uh, beverage. So um, so I got that going. Next we're going to add a little bit of ground cinnamon. A half a teaspoon you could use a uh, you can use a uh, you could use a uh, stick Cinnamon stick, uh, one stick, we go about a half teaspoon of this powder. Uh, but we got that in there, we're just gonna let that sit. Next, we're gonna cut our pineapple. I wanna talk about the pineapple real quick. Uh, traditionally, the way this was done is they just used the rind, people would process the pineapple or just cut the fruit, use for whatever fruit salad, what have you. But they would take the rind, the exterior, and that's what they'd use to make tapache. They also, though, because literally the fruit was coming fresh out of the field of Warber, you weren't worried about, you know, pesticides or anything like that. And they would use the yeast that naturally is on the exterior of a lot of fruits to kick off fermentation. However, living in Las Vegas and living in uh, the modern world, I realized there are things called pesticide and commercial farms and this, that, and the other. So I advise you wash your pineapple. We are not going to use the yeast uh, from from uh, the pineapple itself. Uh, we're going to use some brewing yeast because I know it's safe. I know it, you know it's, it's, it's made for alcohol production. I, I know what I'm getting with this. Also too you don't know what kind of microorganisms or whatever growing on that pineapple. Uh, also too like I, like I said they were using uh, they were just using the rind. We're going to actually use the real fruit. We're going to as I, I'll go ahead and start cutting it while, while I'm talking about this. But anyway, we're going to cut off the very top, which I read if you wanted to plant, you could grow a pineapple plant if you'd like with that. We're just going to cut off the top and the bottom. And then you're going to want to cut the exterior off. Actually, I think we'll do it like this. We're going to use more of the whole fruit than they do down there. Um, again, this was tapachi was just a reason, you know, another thing to make off the use of pineapple. Or here, we don't mind if we use the whole pineapple fork. So we're going to cut that off, and then we're going to cut. You'll have this harder core of the pineapple that we really don't need. Doesn't add much flavor, however. So we're going to cut that off. And if you wanted to, you could use it for other things. And some recipes talk about they, they use this and not the fruit 
But again, I don't want to waste the fruit, so we're, we're going to use the fruit and just cut away this harder core. If you're wanting a little more of the, the fresh pineapple taste. Alright, so we've got that core away, and then we're just going to cut into larger pieces here. There's really no rhyme and reason to the cut, you know, thick, thin, what have you. Just cut it up to make our life a little easier. More importantly, to make it easier to clean this thing out when it comes time to clean. Oh, watch yourself. All right. Let me go ahead and get the rest of this cut up, and then we'll come back to pitch the yeast and talk our way through the rest of the process. All right, so we've got all our ingredients mixed together in the mixture or uh, in our fermenter. We're good to go. Uh, our next step is adding the yeast. Like I said, because because we get commercially grown pineapple, and we're not sure about the whole pesticide thing or whatever, we went ahead and washed the pineapple, which took off any wild yeast that would be on the exterior. Again, if you have access to organic pineapple and want to, uh, you know, make something a little more traditional feel free to do that. If you did that, you would just toss in the pineapple and you would come back to check in a day or so or a few hours, see if you got bubbling started, because that meant we got fermentation going. Um, and then you would just keep an eye on it from there. We're going to use, like I said, I'm going to use uh, Saf Ale USO5, just a standard ale yeast. These packets that they come in are 11 and a half ground packets. They're generally good for a five gallon brew. So we're only going to sprinkle couple of grams in there, nothing nothing too crazy. Again, remember this is a lighter alcoholic beverage. Give it a little swirl. Around. So, where do we go from here? Alright, so we got everything in the fermenter, uh, pitched the yeast. We're going to keep this out at room temperature for about two days, roughly 48 hours. Go 72 if you like, no big deal. And then we're going to come back then and I'm going to siphon everything off the pineapple and uh, we're, we're going to filter the liquid off and then we'll go, go ahead and bottle. Uh, we're going to actually bottle this and we'll bottle it and leave it out for room temperature for about a day or so. Similar to what we did with kvass, we just want enough fermentation to go on to create enough CO2 to carbonate this. We want something light, refreshing. Um, so probably the total time of fermentation may be anywhere from four to five days total, which means we're not going to get really a full fermentation as far as ABV production goes. Um, really, the alcohol doesn't start getting produced until a day or two into the fermentation. So we're not going to have as much fermentation, but we're going to have a lightly fermented, light alcohol carbonated beverage. So we're going to let this sit for two days, and then we'll come back to bottle. All right, it's been three days, and you can see, almost three days, and you can see we have quite an active fermentation. Uh, got a nice little uh, foaming action. Normally, if we were doing like a regular beer or a wine or whatever, we would let this ferment out for at least a couple weeks, maybe rack, put in a secondary ferm fermentation vessel. Uh, but like I said, this particular product, Apache, is a just lightly fermented, lightly alcoholic lightly carbonated beverage. So we're going to go ahead and bottle this. Um, and uh, Bottle this, then we'll leave out overnight for a day, and then uh, we'll be ready to refrigerate. So we're probably about a day and a half away from having something to drink. So let's get to bottling. All right, so it's time to bottle. Um, real quick, one of the great things I like about these little Mr. Beer fermenters is the built-in spigot just makes your life real easy bottling. Speaking of bottles, I'm using these half liter little plastic bottles. Uh, great thing about them is you can give them a squeeze, you can feel how much uh, carbonation is building up on the inside. If you know they, if they start to get hard on you, then you know your beers can carbonate it. That's a great little advantage. Also, too, you're not worried about what are called bottle bombs. Uh, if you ever had a bottle explode on you. <laughs> home brewing you realize the mess it makes so these plastic bottles are real convenient and they have the reusable uh, tops I will leave links down below to both, both of these if you'd like to get them uh, you could if you want to save a little bit of money just reuse like a 
Gatorade bottle, Powerade bottle, what have you, as long as you sanitize them, and we've, we've uh, sanitized our bottles. So we're going to go ahead and bottle. Uh, again, this is a little different than what we do when we homebrew a beer. Uh, like I said, we would let the fermentation go for much longer. We also would bottle condition the beer for much longer than we're going to. We're just going to fill these up and let them sit at room temperature overnight and then throw them into the fridge. Uh, the reason we throw them in the fridge, A, is we're serving temperature, obviously, but also, two, it will stop that yeast activity. We're, we're really in the, still in the active phase of fermentation, so you don't want, you know, if we let it sit out, we would, we would over carbonate and again possibly have bottle bombs, but we do not want that. So we're just going to let it sit out overnight in the refrigerator. You want to fill up about maybe two inch or two from the top. You want to leave a little head space uh, when you're bottled. So let me get this bottled. Like I said, we'll leave we'll leave the bottles out overnight, and then uh, tomorrow we'll come back, throw them in the fridge for a couple hours, get them to serving temperature. And we'll come back to give our tapachi a try. All right, so we let our tapachi uh, sit overnight, and we put it in the fridge. And so now we're ready for the moment of the truth, the taste test. Uh, it's been in total of, uh, I believe, five days since the start of this process. So let's see how our tapachi turned out. All right, got a little. Plenty of bubbles. Oh, we got a nice little, nice little head. Kind of like a cloudy Hefeweizen as far as uh, the appearance goes. All right, definitely get the pineapple there. Let's give her a try. Oh, that's pleasant. Real, it's a light drink. There's the effervescence. That carbonation, sweet but not over the top. Uh, body, it's fairly a fairly light body drink. Man, this just seems really refreshing. Uh, yeah, I could just sip on that all day. That's really a light, pleasant, fun little drink. Um, Possibly might add a little more sweetness. We might next time add a little more sugar to it. Uh, I could see maybe going a little honey in there. That wouldn't be bad, but uh, man, that's a nice little refreshing drink. Uh, real quick to recap what we did. Our recipe is pretty simple. One whole ripe pineapple. We also uh, need our, the sugar, the peel and silo. Um, I use two of the cones. You can use regular brown sugar if you can't find the peel and silo. And then I used a little bit of ground cinnamon, but you can use a whole cinnamon stick in there if you would like. We let that ferment for about three days. Then we went ahead and bottled, let the room or let the bottle to bottle condition one day at room temperature. And we threw in the fridge and voila, ready to serve. Um, it's probably good for uh, those of you that really like uh, shorter, quicker drinks. A lot of people like well. You know, do I have to wait this long? Did I, this is a, a quick little drink. It's lower in alcohol. Uh, probably, we did not do a gravity room, but probably we're around probably 2%, maybe 3% at the most alcohol by volume. But quick, light, easy drink. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time. Bottoms up.